Hello and welcome to the celebration of the sixth Sunday in Ordinary Time. Today, we also celebrate our 12th anniversary. Today's gospel passage, Jesus heals a leper. Heals all of us who suffer from some form of leprosy, sometimes who feel ourselves left out. Let us pray during this Eucharist that we may find a home that welcomes us. My dear friends, we gather and pray as always in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Grace, peace, and mercy from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Today we gather to celebrate the sixth Sunday in ordinary time and to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. We call to mind our sins and we ask for mercy and pardon. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. May God Almighty have mercy upon us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray that everything we do will be guided by God's law of love. Gracious God, you have promised to remain forever with those who do what is just and right. Help us to live in your presence. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who is alive and rules with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, 
forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, if someone has on his skin a scab or pustule or blotch, which appears to be the sore of leprosy, he shall be brought to Aaron the priest, or to one of the priests among his descendants. If the man is leprous and unclean, the priest shall declare him unclean by reason of the sore on his head. The one who bears the sore of, le of leprosy shall grant, keep his garments rent and his head bare and shall muffle his beard. He shall cry out, unclean, unclean. As long as the sore is on him, he shall declare himself unclean, since he is in fact unclean. He shall dwell apart, making his abode outside the camp. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Avoid giving offense, whether to the Jews or Greeks or the church of God. Just as I try to please everyone in every way, not seeking my own benefit, but that of the many, that they may be saved. Be imitators of me, so I am of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. Christ reconciling, he entrusts. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. A leper came to Jesus and kneeling down begged him and said, If you wish, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand, touched him, and said to him, I do will it, be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately, and he, made, and he was made clean. Then, warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once. He said to him, See that you tell no one anything, but go show yourself to the priest and offer your cleansing what Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. And he remained outside in deserted places, and people kept coming to him from everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let the church say amen. Amen, amen again. Amen. A happy anniversary to you all. Thank you. Um, I very much miss having us to celebrate in person, uh, but we are doing the best we can. Maybe when we get back, we will have a celebration of some sort. Um, I want us to go back two weeks ago, and this is just as a preamble uh, to this homily so that we can have this at the back of our mind. We did mention a couple weeks ago that demons in the world and the place of Jesus had a way of dehumanizing people. Uh, somebody who had a demon was not seen as whole. There was something lacking in them, and they were treated as such. Uh, everybody knew about them. People spoke about their demons. And what that has happened over the years is that they, they, they began to deny part of themselves and thus not become whole. And whenever we deny a part of ourselves, we are, in effect, dehumanizing ourselves, right? Um, there is also... Uh, in the world and place of Jesus, the whole issue of leprosy, especially coming from the book of Leviticus and Deuteronomy, and in the way they treated people with leprosy. Leprosy, too, had a way of dehumanizing somebody. If one had leprosy, they could not live with their loved ones. They were sent out. And they would have a bell and ring that bell, crying out, leper, leper. What a dehumanizing experience. No matter how much they loved their family, I'm sure most of those people ringing that little bell, say, telling everybody that they were unclean, would have given everything to read a book to their child before bed or to kiss their loved one before bed. But they could not do that. Can you imagine? Can you imagine a life like that? That's a central part of you that is taken away because you have a blemish, a scab. So have that in the back of our mind. The second building block that I want to present before we build this homily is something that you already know. I am in law enforcement. After I left the Archdiocese, I went looking for jobs here and there. I ended up at UPS in accounting, and I was dying every day. <laughs> and I said, enough of this. I'm going to work as a police officer because I want to be close to the people. I want to, mean, I want to find a way of doing ministry, and off I went to the academy. And I have loved my job in law enforcement very, very much. And now, whenever I read the scriptures, it is not only through the lens of priest, father, UPS worker, it is also through the lens of police officer. And as I was reading this story, something happened. If I was to ask you today, in today's gospel passage, what is the miracle? Most of us will say, Jesus healed the leper. And I will say, yes. Then I will ask, 
But what is the miracle? And we will say, Jesus healed the leper. And I will say, yes. Think again. What is the miracle? I took a course in law enforcement. It's called Dignitary Protection. I am able, with my team, to get Lady Gaga <laughs> from the airport to the Yum Center without her ever seeing anybody. We can weave through town, get her to where she's going, and get her out of that place without her seeing anyone or anybody seeing her or having an opportunity to talk to her. Again, what is the miracle? For me, coming from law enforcement, I ask myself, what was this detail that Jesus of Nazareth had? Huh? That they would let a leper get that close to Jesus. I mean, th Jesus is, is not just some, some guy walking around. He is Rabbi Jesus. He has, at least from what we know, at least 12 people around him. Their job is to keep Jesus safe. Right? And we know that there are other, maybe 72 others who are there. Je it is... Oh, sometimes we read the scriptures, we think uh, any... Uh, what do you call it? Tom, Tom, and Harry could just walk up and meet Jesus? No, he is a well-established rabbi who should have a detail. And for me, it baffles me that a leper approached him. And so the miracle, for me, yes, maybe there is the primary miracle that Maybe there's a, the secondary miracle that Jesus healed the leper. The primary miracle for me is the leper got that clause. What's going on with Jesus' detail? They're supposed to keep him safe. They're supposed to get him to the synagogue and out of the synagogue. They are the buffer. But it seems every now and then, there are holes in that buffer. That's every now and then, maybe, maybe, maybe it was just a chance meeting. Somehow Jesus is going somewhere, and by chance, the leper is there. Maybe it was a chance meeting. Maybe the leper was the brother of one of Jesus' disciples, and that person said, I will get you as close as I can. Because that too happens, right? And so somebody who loved this leper, who saw how it was destroying him, that he was not able to be with his family, thought to themselves, if only I can get this person as close as I can to Jesus, and they lock eyes, Jesus will see him, he will see Jesus, and they will have an opportunity to talk. Remember, this leper doesn't only walk around, he walks around with a bell. Where is the bell? Ah, we have trouble in this detail. But God works in mysterious ways. And somehow, Jesus has made himself available even to the lepers who should not approach. Even to those people who have been told over and over again, do not come close. Remember, uh, Jesus got in trouble with his disciples because he was left somewhere and this lady comes and is to, to, to draw water. The first question the disciples were, were was, what is he doing with her? Oh, well, you, you left him unprotected. He, he's, just, he's just there. Um, so, yes, there are disciples who push people away. There is the crowd in, um, in Mark's gospel that tends to push people away. The point is, he got close. This man with a blemish got close enough to have a conversation with Jesus. This man who is unclean, he got close enough by the strangest 
of miracles the strangest of ways. When you and I gather in this space, maybe we come as the leper. Maybe we don't even know how to begin to come to the Lord. And as the leper, we sit and we wonder, how can I get close to Jesus of Nazareth that he might see me, that he might see my experience, that he might see the anxiety that keeps me awake at night? How can I do this? Well, he told us how to. Sometimes somebody comes close to Jesus because another person says, hey, come with me to our church. Just come and visit for a second. And maybe when you are in that space, you will feel a love that you have never felt before. Maybe when you are in that space, you will feel accepted as you have never been accepted before. Maybe when you are in this space, you will realize that what others call a blemish, what others call a demon, could be a blessing because it keeps you so grounded and it helps you accept who you are. The power of invitation. Maybe you are just driving by and you want to check out this church or that church. I was driving by on the web and I came across a church. I think it was called, it's called Trinity Church in New York. Wonderful homilies there. It's an Episcopal church. And I stopped and I was like, oh my gosh, there's this priest on that website who speaks to my heart. And every Sunday after, after homily, I go and watch his homilies as well. And I'm like, how did he take this message? How did he bring it uh, to life? A chance meeting. So today, let us pray for our community, that it be that place where somebody says, come, I think he is going to pass by this way. Come, you don't have to join, just come and visit. You might find something special. And I find that preaches so very much for me. Because what has happened these past 12 years is that, corny as it might sound, I feel I have met the Lord here. I feel that, that he has passed by the people whom we have married here, the people whom we have buried here, the people who have come here, the people with the broad shoulders who have said, you are okay. We love you. And I feel that's, that's the blessing. Um, now, this may <laughs> or may not be connected to the gospel. I have been getting some letters right, from the Archbishop of Louvre. Archbishop Kurtz. He has been very, very kind, very, very respectful. Started last summer inviting me uh, to schedule a meeting with him. And in his address to me, he says, Father Chibundi, can you come down so we can have a discussion about your ministry? Now, that's very interesting. Um, just that language, it is very reassuring. And I have nothing but good things to say about Archbishop Kurtz because of how he has treated me um, uh, in the past couple of conversations. One of the difficulties that he has, though, and I, that we are trying to work around is um, as we celebrate, and I, I need to be open with you with this, as we celebrate this 12th anniversary, is um, he has issued out uh, an, an instruction or an invitation um, to come back to Rome and 
So I was like, well, what does that mean for myself and for over the 400 people that come to Rabuni? What, what does this mean? Does this mean cease and desist and come back to Rome and let's find out a way of, I, I don't know what this means. So I write back and I ask these questions. Let me know what this means. And I have said in those letters, uh, to be quite open, I was like, if what we are saying is come back and never ever speak in the name of the Lord again or celebrate Eucharist, I have to be honest with you from the get-go, I cannot violate my conscience. Because whether you believe it or not, I feel the Lord has passed here too. I feel very strongly that this community has received a blessing as well. Maybe it is just a speck of a blessing, but we don't get to hang around for 12 years if God hasn't looked at us. And sometimes we might have a difficulty why God is blessing somebody else. And we need to get on the program and say, maybe, just maybe, God is present here as well as God is present there. Is that possible? I, 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 I firmly believe in that. So my last uh, couple of weeks ago, actually, uh, Father Kevin says, oh, you have another letter. <laughs> so we open it and we read it. Then. I love this community. I love to see what God is doing here. And this is a matter of conscience. For I and you may be that leper, not perfect, but our eyes have locked in with Jesus, with our Lord, and we have had that conversation. And I feel like we have been sent home clean. God saying, I love you just the way you are. And so in celebrating this 12th anniversary, we are a community that was probably not supposed to last longer than three months. 12 years later, we are here. We have even survived 2020. <laughs> and we are here, blessed by the hand of God. Every day I wake up, every day I wake up and I say the same prayer over and over and over again. I've been saying the same prayer for 12 years. I say it in my own language because I think God might understand it even better when I speak it in Chinyanja. I say every day, please, you know, every day I say, God, help us with funds to build a church. God, help us with funds to build a church. Every single, I go for a run, I make my son off the cross, and I go, I say the same prayer. And maybe God is saying, we have done that. You don't need funds to build a church. In faith, in the plan that I have for you. So as we celebrate, I know I'm packing a lot in this 12th anniversary and the reading. Uh, as we celebrate this 12th anniversary, we want to say thank you. Thank you to the people who brought us close to the Lord. Thank you for the people who said, Lord, we know you are, you are busy, but I have a brother, I have a sister who has leprosy, who have a blemish. Would you mind stopping and having a conversation with her, with him? And Jesus has this conversation with you and with I and says to us, I have made you whole. This is the mission of Jesus of Nazareth, to come and make us whole, complete, accepting ourselves for who and what we are and claiming that and saying, you know what, I don't know what you believe, I don't know what you believe, what I know is this, 
I feel in my heart of hearts accepted by God and how grateful I am. We pray during this Eucharist for the community in Lebanon, the communities that join us and the people that join us all over the world to celebrate Eucharist online. You have kept us alive. You have pushed us along 12 years, and we are ever so grateful. And my hope, my sincere hope, is that very soon we get together and we celebrate in person and have that smell of chicken downstairs. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and some greens. Yeah, we should have some greens from Lebanon. <laughs> and together we profess our faith. We believe in one God the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, one in being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophet. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In faith, we now present our petitions before the Lord. Please respond, God of love, hear our prayer. That our community may courageously reach out to those who are considered lepers in our society, we pray. Loving God. For this world in which so many suffer, may the resources of health and healing be more equi equitably shared, we pray. God of love, hear our prayer. For those who are forced to live apart from the love of family or society due to prejudice, may they know God's love through our healing touch, we pray. God of love, hear our prayer. For those in our community who are sick or in any need, may they know our love and whisper of hope and healing deep within their hearts, we pray. God of love, hear our prayer. In gratitude to our community of faith, which has made possible these past 12 years, a community of love and acceptance where all are welcome. May God continue to guide our path and provide for our future, we pray. God of love, hear our prayer. For all those who have gone before us to the great adventure of the life to come, we especially remember Grady Marks. For these, we pray. God of love, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we ask you to receive these prayers that we make in faith through Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Church that this is our sacrifice may be acceptable to God our Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice for so the praise and glory of God's name, for good and the good of all God's church. Lord, we make this offering in obedience to your word. May it cleanse and renew us and lead us to eternal reward. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Let us lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, it is our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks to your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. He is the Word through whom you made the universe, the Savior you sent to redeem us. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake, he opened his arms on the cross, he put an end to death and revealed the resurrection. In this he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy king. And so we join the angels and the saints in proclaiming your glory as we sing. Lord, you are holy indeed, the fountain of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death that he freely accepted, he took bread and gave you thanks and prayers. He broke the bread, gave it to his friends and said, Take this, all of you, and eat. 
This is my body which will be given up for you. supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise. He gave the cup to his friends and said, take this, all of you, and drink it. This is the cup of my blood, blood of the new and everlasting cup. It will be poured out for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven. Please do this in memory of me. Father, this life-giving bread and this seven cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world. Make us grow in love together with Francis, the Bishop of Rome, and all the bishops and clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to the arrest in the hope of rising again. Bring them, and all the departed, in the light of your presence. Have mercy on all of us, make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with Joseph, our husband, the apostles, and with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you, union with them, and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all oh, glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Together we pray for the coming of the kingdom as our Lord Jesus Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all world as we wait in joy for hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, you say to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever. Peace of the Lord be with
Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are we who are called to his son. Lord, I am not ready to receive you, but only say the word and I shall. May the body of the Christ bring us life everlasting. Lord, you give us food from heaven. May we always hunger for the bread of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace.